One of the biggest problems with teaching is that our students learn from a variety of different perspectives. Some of them are visual, kinesthetic, audio, and the list goes on and on. Finding the talents of our students is both empowering and super, super important. But maybe what's even more important is learning about their personalities. In this activity, I tried it so you don't have to, we did a psychology walk. In my class, I got to do a psychology, I did three different types, and I did one that was a psychology walk through the desert. Basically, you have the kids relax, meditate, you shut the doors, you turn the lights out, and you have them start in a desert. And everybody's got their heads on their desk, and the lighting is low, and so at that time, you have them picture a box. Picture the box. See all sides of the box. Picture above the box, below the box, look around the box. Okay, now that you've seen your box, you look around the desert and you notice, oh, there's a ladder. So you're with the ladder and you see the ladder and you take it in and then you see right next to the ladder, a horse, a horse. And the horse does something. It interacts with you in some way. Look at the horse, pay attention to how it interacts with you. How does the horse smell? How does the horse look? How tall is the horse? Is it healthy? Is it thin? And then as you're interacting with your horse, you notice on the horizon, there's a storm coming and the storm is getting closer and closer and closer. Oh my goodness, the storm is coming. What are you going to do? The storm is right upon you. It's happening. Everything's getting crazy. And then you wake them up and then you have them write down on their paper. You ask them, okay, you know, draw your box or describe your box, whatever, however they like to learn, and your ladder and your horse and the storm. And then you walk through and you explain that the box is themselves. And so some of the kids will see like a jeweled box. It's a treasure box. Some of their boxes will be locked closed so even they can't open them. Some of them will be closed um, and they'll be locked inside when the storm comes. And what all this represents is themselves. So if the box is cardboard and it's ripped right open, and it doesn't even hold its shape, then that's how they view themselves. That means they're really open, they don't have a filter, they have a hard time with boundaries, they care more about what other people think about them than, than they do, and then you've got metal boxes that are, you know, ironclad and <laughs> paddle locks all around, which means, of course, they're secret, but they see themselves as sturdy and strong, and they get to each evaluate what their box means. And then the latter is technology, they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff with technology. The horse represents um, what you do with your friends, how you interact with other people. Uh, if you have a white horse, you believe in nobility and kindness and selflessness. If you have an emaciated horse, maybe your relationships aren't as healthy as they should be. Um, so how the horse looks and interacts with you represents how you care about relationships. And then the clincher, the funnest, you know, the reason we do this is the storm represents their problems. So if they see a big storm, then that means that they think they're, they're, they take their problems and they throw them, you know, out of proportion. If they see a tiny little storm, then, you know, maybe they don't see their problems as that bad. And then of course, how they interact with that storm is critical. Do they get on the horse? Meaning, do they go to their friends? Do they interact with their friends and run away from the problem? Do they walk quietly towards the problem? Yes, I have students do that. It's incredibly good health, healthy coping mechanisms. Do they hide in the box? Meaning, do they retreat into themselves? Do they take the ladder and climb above the storm? Which is always a fascinating thing. Now, of course, the purpose of this walk is for them to share with me what they saw, to talk about themselves, who they are, and to learn more about how they see themselves. If they disagree with the whole thing, they're still teaching you more about themselves. And now I get a glimpse, not just into their personalities or their learning style, but their self-worth, how they care about relationships, how they see themselves, and how hardy or lack of, I don't know what the opposite of hardy is, <laughs> like fragile, I guess, they are. And so I love to do this activity with my kids. I tried it so you don't have to. I highly recognize any psychology walk that you can find. I'll post a bunch on our TPT page so that you can try them. That will target different things from self-esteem to handling problems. Um, I have a great one that talks about relationships and how to deal with fear. And hopefully you'll enjoy them. Okay, three pros to a psychology walk. First, it allows you to connect with your kids in a deeper way. You get to know more than just their learning styles and their personality in the classroom. 
You get to the root of their values and how they see themselves. Two, it's a great way to bring the mood down. If you have really loud, wiggly class, it's difficult to calm down. This is a great way to do a meditation. You breathe them down, you've released their stress. And three, this allows us to do powerful imagery work. Remember when we're reading, we're supposed to be creating pictures in our mind, but too often our students don't really know how to visualize things. So during the psychology walk, we're asking them to picture things, we're helping them picture things, we're holding pictures in their head, and ultimately this is gonna make them stronger readers, which is like our little trick. Three cons. One, it takes up a lot of time. Uh, the kids get really, really excited <laughs> and they'll want to yell everything and tell you all about what happened and then they'll want to analyze deeper and deeper. So it definitely is an activity that takes up time. Another con about this is if you get interrupted a lot, it can be really difficult to get them in the mindset and the place that you want to be. And a third con is um, our trauma-informed research tells us that some students have a difficult time relaxing in these settings. So you might need to have those students timed out to a different teacher if they're not able to fully relax, or you might see that they struggle with the activity of relaxing and visualizing. However, if we help walk them through this, this can actually help heal trauma. And if this is the case in your class and you have a lot of students with high trauma, consider doing a few tapping exercises, like basic tapping for the nervous system. I'm sure you all know all about that already. If not, check out a video on tapping. But do some tapping to regulate their nervous system before you try to actually do the psychology walk. It'll really help kids who maybe have some dysregulation problems and have a difficult time with trust. And that's ultimately a con and a pro. So we tried it so you don't have to. Psychology walk, two thumbs up. Have a great day.